chapter 10 verses 46 through 52 verse 46 says then they came to Jericho and as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city there was a blind man named Bartimaeus he was sitting by the roadside begging verse 47 it says when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth he began to shout Jesus son of David have mercy on me many rebuked him and told him to be quiet but he shouted all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 49, Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, for your faith has healed you. Immediately he received a sight and followed Jesus along the road. Amen. You may be seated. You know, verse 46 says there was a large crowd. Everybody say large crowd. And you get this picture. You see this blind man, Bartimaeus, sitting by the roadside. And, uh, you know, I've been, having lived over in Asia for the last 15 years, I've seen some large crowds. I've been to wet markets, basically, where they sell the fruits and vegetables. And it's not uncommon to see two or 3,000 people at a wet market. Could you imagine going to Kroger and having 2,000 people inside a Kroger or a Walmart? You know, so it's very, so in this day and age, I mean, this would have been outside. There's people everywhere. Here comes Jesus. He's got some notoriety by now. And so people are crowding. And, and you've got this blind man, Bartimaeus, sitting by the roadside, begging, hoping to get the attention of Jesus. And I don't know about you, but have you ever felt like, does Jesus really even hear me when I pray? 
Have you ever felt that? Maybe you know you think, gosh, I mean, there's seven billion people on the face of the planet. And if just a billion of those people are calling out on the name of Jesus, could he possibly hear my prayers here in Cynthia, Kentucky? He doesn't even know where Cynthia, Kentucky is. Have you ever thought that? that, that does the Lord hear me? And not only that, Bartimaeus had to deal with all the distractions. There was people everywhere. Boy, you and I are dealing with distractions today. There's 24-7 cable news, right? There's a thousand voices screaming wherever you go. And yet nothing has changed about Jesus. He still hears his people when they call on his name. In the midst of this noisy, crowded, market, dusty place that Bartimaeus was, was setting, Jesus heard Bartimaeus. And he hears you as well. Just think about this for a moment. Right now, Jesus can see you. Right where you're sitting. Right where you're sitting. Every breath that you exhale, he knows it. Every, he knows the number of times you will blink your eyes during the service. Or if you fall asleep. <laughs> you better be good. You better watch out. No. He sees you. I don't know. I believe that's for somebody this morning. I think Crystal was kind of hitting on that a little bit during worship. Jesus sees you. He hears your prayers. Verse 47. It says, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout. Everybody shout. Can you shout? Yeah. All right. I got some Pentecostals here. I think Bartimaeus may have been the first Pentecostal. It says he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And, and it's interesting, he continues to shout this same phrase, Jesus, son of David. Now, I was thinking, Bartimaeus, you know, you could have saved yourself some oxygen, just cry out to Jesus. Why do you have to throw in the son of David part? I mean, that day and age, Jesus was a very common name. Steve, Bob, any Bobs here? Bud, there's at least 10,000 Buds in Kentucky, right? To get your attention, we'd have to go, Bud, the son of Bud, right, or something, whoever. <laughs> there were many people who had the name Jesus, but only one person, and this is the key, only one person could be called Jesus, son of David. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, you don't have to go there, it was prophesied that the Messiah would come from the line of David. Now, if I'm writing the New Testament, Matthew 1.1 1, 1 is not going to be a genealogy. But in the New Testament that you read, the very first verse we read in Matthew 1.1 1, 1 claims this. This is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David. So what Bartimaeus is actually saying is, I know who you are. Now keep in mind, this is before Christ has been crucified, before he's you know, been raised from the grave. He's saying, I know who you are. You are more than just a, a teacher, a rabbi. You are God in the flesh. And many people at this time, they, they believe Jesus was a good teacher, a faith healer, but not many recognized who he really was. Even his disciples up to this point were not totally sure <laughs> who Jesus was, that he really was the Messiah. So the whole crowd would have heard Bartimaeus' confession. He was saying, Jesus, I know you're more than human. You are indeed God. And though the eyes of Bartimaeus were blind, the eyes of his soul could see very clear. The eyes of his soul could see very clear. And my prayer for you, I don't know about you, but you know there's a lot of different Jesuses being preached today. There's a whole lot of different Jesuses being preached. There's the Jesus that uh, that doesn't really care. He's not going to judge anybody. Everybody's it's all going to be okay. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world, right? He loves everybody. Nobody's going to be judged. Everybody's going to make it to heaven, right? Universalism is what they call it in theology classes. There's a lot of different Jesuses. My prayer for you and I is that we would recognize Jesus for who he truly is, the son of David, the soon coming king, the one who will judge the world, 
the one who sits at the right hand of the Father. May you not be led astray by the many different Jesuses that are being preached today. And I know your pastor. I know he's preaching the true Jesus. Verse 48 says, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. Wow, what a group. Can you imagine? You're blind. You're sitting by the roadside. You're begging. And you got all these people telling you to be quiet. But listen, it says, he shouted all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. You know, you and I live in a culture where Christians are being told to be quiet all the time. We don't want your truth. <laughs> don't tell us what's right or wrong. Your opinion doesn't count. We're loud. We're proud. Don't tell us what's right or wrong. My body, my choice. We don't want you Christians telling us what's right and wrong. But when the crowd rebukes you because of your stand for Christ, shout all the more. Shout all the more. This is not the season to be quiet. Shout for your family, for your church, your religious freedoms. You know, every time you come to this church on a Sunday morning and park your car, it's like a vote for religious freedom. It's just as important as what you do on the second Tuesday in November. Now, maybe no one's ever rebuked you and told you to stop bothering Jesus like this crowd did, but I'm sure the devil has told you many times, stop praying, stop serving, stop focusing on God. You don't really need to go to church this morning. You went last week. You can listen to Pastor Steve's sermon on the Facebook. Maybe the devil's whispered in your ear to just be quiet, kind of live your life, stop believing God to answer your prayers. Stop believing for the salvation of your loved ones. You've already prayed for them. You don't need to continue to pray for them. Maybe the devil's whispered in your ear, stop believing for the restoration of a broken marriage or broken family or friendship. Maybe the devil's just said, you know, just be quiet. Just live your life. But when the people told Bartimaeus to be quiet, the scripture says, he shouted all the more. Which in the Greek translation, what that means is, he shouted all the more. <laughs> now, I don't think we have to shout to get God's attention. He's not deaf, right? But I do believe we need to be persistent. And that's what this scripture is trying to teach us. Bartimaeus was persistent. He was not going to give up. Sometimes we need to be aggressive in our prayers, right? Bartimaeus was determined. He was focused. He was persistent. I got a question for you. What if Bartimaeus had listened to the crowd? What if when they said, Bartimaeus, just be quiet, just mind your own business, what if he had listened to the crowd? I don't believe with this story would have ever made the pages of Scripture. Maybe this miracle would have never been recorded. We would never even know the name Bartimaeus. But because he was persistent and would not give up, we read in verse 49, Jesus stopped and said, call him. Everybody say, call him. call him. Jesus stopped. Why did Jesus stop for Bartimaeus? Bartimaeus, I can assure you, was not the only blind, sick, or needy person that Jesus passed by that day. I am 100% sure of that. I think he stopped because of Bartimaeus' faith. Bartimaeus recognized that Jesus was God, the Messiah, the son of David. And 2,000 years later, he is still stopping for those who call on his name. In, this midst, in the midst of this crazy world that you and I are living in right now, uh, where the crowd is so noisy, there's so many distractions, Jesus is still stopping. He's stopping for those who call on his name. When you call on his name, he is stopping and listening to your prayers. Call him, said Jesus. Now, I love this transaction that takes place in the story. Bartimaeus is calling upon Jesus and now Jesus is calling upon Bartimaeus. In verse 49, it says, The crowd said to the blind man, says they, they called to the blind man, Cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Now, isn't this interesting? In verse 48, the people are telling him to be quiet. The people are telling him, Bartimaeus, mind your own business. Leave Jesus alone. And now in verse 49, they're telling him to cheer up. On your feet. He's calling you. 
Well, people can be fickle, right? One minute they're against you, the next they're telling you to cheer up. When we first went into the mission field, we were raising a budget for the very first time. And man, we had some folks just say, you know, don't get your hopes up. May not get to raise that budget. Better have a plan B. Things may not work out too well. And then when we did raise our budget, those same people were like, I knew it. I knew God was going to help you raise your budget. I just knew everything was going to work out. Had a word of knowledge. I just wasn't going to share it to you until you raised your budget. I'm like, yeah, thanks, man. Amen. Call him. Call him, Jesus said. Now, Bartimaeus is blind, and yet Jesus calls him forward. And I'm thinking, Jesus, he's blind. You should go to him. But in spite of his pain, he was asked to come forward. And you and I are no different. We come to Christ with our pain. Jesus hears your prayers. Jesus stops. But at the same time, we have a responsibility to come forward. I've often said, if salvation was 100 steps, Jesus will take 99 of them. But he'll leave that last one for you and I to make. Verse 50 says, he threw his cloak aside. You know, his cloak was like a little snuggy bunny. No, oh, it's not true. It's like a little, uh, what would you call it, a cloak? It's like a blanket that they would have worn to keep themselves warm at night and so forth. And it was like a big deal, right? It wasn't just like a jacket. They kept this thing with them everywhere they went. It says he threw his cloak aside. I just call it one of those little snuggy bunnies like you see from 1995, you know, on the you know, late night uh, info commercials. But it threw his cloak aside, jumped to his feet, and came to Jesus. I love this. I don't think Mark just threw this in, the, 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 uh, uh, Mark, the writer of this gospel. He didn't throw this in just for good measure. Words in scripture are not wasted. It says he threw his cloak aside. Mark is trying to teach us something here. Bartimaeus' cloak was a hindrance. It slowed him down. My question for you this morning, are there any cloaks in your life? Is there anything you're holding on to right now that is keeping you from following the Lord with all your heart and mind. Crystal mentioned this.